Trusts are not just for the ultra wealthy. It's true, they can do a lot in the form of protecting you from estate taxes and probate, but they can do so much more. There's a lot of information out there, but no one talks about what you should not put in trust or risk creating problems. When it comes to funding a trust, the first thing that happens is you get a trust document created. And often people think that once they have that trust, they need to go out and re-register everything they own in the name of the trust. This is also known as funding the trust. However, there are some very specific assets that you do not want to put in trust for many reasons, including causing tax problems as well as potential liability. Now, the first type of asset that you don't want to put in trust are your retirement accounts. So these are things like your TSP or a lot of people have IRAs, some people have 401ks, and all of the different varieties of that, 403B, 457. These are all types of accounts that should remain outside of a trust. One reason for this is that retirement accounts are in fact by themselves a form of trust agreement and therefore don't need to actually be placed in a trust. You probably know there are beneficiary designations in your retirement accounts that just like in a trust, you get to decide who receives your assets upon your death. Now, if you were to go out and create a trust account and you retitle your retirement accounts to the name of the trust, you are potentially creating a liquidation of your account, which remember what happens when money comes out of retirement accounts? We have a taxable event that's caused. So this would be the equivalent of taking out your TSP all in the same year and then having to pay taxes on the whole thing. So this is why you wanna leave your IRAs, TSP, 401ks, any of those retirement accounts in your individual name or in the name of your spouse if it's their account and do not put those in the trust name. Now, sometimes people will name the trust as the beneficiary of their retirement accounts. And this is quite often done to help protect the family and have some control in case you're leaving assets to kids or just if you wanna have some greater sense of control in how your money is used after you're gone. So for example, many of you have your TSP or IRA beneficiaries the primary being your spouse, if you're married. And in most cases, people will then list their kids as contingent. The contingent is the beneficiary that gets the assets if the primary is no longer alive. Problem with this is let's say both you and your spouse pass away at the same time. Let's follow the money. The kids are essentially going to receive that inheritance directly. And maybe your kids are in college or perhaps they're mid twenties. And you might be thinking that you're not really wanting to leave one or two million dollars directly to your kids when they are so young. Perhaps a family might decide they wanna design their trust so that the inheritance is only available once their children reach age 35, or maybe it is available immediately, but only for things like buying a home or paying off college debt, things like that. Well, by naming the kids as contingent beneficiary, if you and your spouse are gone, they get to decide what they're gonna do with their money by themselves. Now, some of you might think that your kids have a good head on their shoulders, and I'm sure they do. But listen to me when I tell you that it may not be the best thing for a young person to inherit. So in a circumstance like this, we often see people name their spouse as the primary beneficiary, and then they name the trust as the contingent beneficiary, so that if they're both gone, now the money goes to the trust, and however the trust was written, gets to decide how the money can be used. And remember that the trust has a trustee that is assigned, we typically recommend that it not be a family member, that you do get a professional trustee because a professional trustee is more than likely an attorney who's going to read the document and make sure that the assets are being used in a responsible manner in a way that you would have wanted. So now you're starting to see how all of these pieces come together. And the other thing that you wanna consider is the potential tax implication of leaving retirement accounts in trust. The SECURE Act created some additional required minimum distribution rules and how non-spouses have to deplete those accounts. So make sure that you're checking with your advisors before moving forward. Now, the next asset that you should not put in trust are anything that falls into the category of vehicles. So mostly that's going to be your cars, trucks, things like that. But we're close to Annapolis, so we often see boats sometimes put in trust. And there's really a few reasons that you want to avoid this. The first is that these assets have a title to them and can be very easily transferred to your beneficiaries without going to probate. In fact, in most cases, an executor of an estate can get this done uh, really only with a death certificate that they present to the DMV. But beyond this, there's another really important reason that you don't wanna put a vehicle in trust. When you retitle your vehicle, say your car, into the name of a trust, you're making it very obvious that your family now owns a trust. And why would this be a problem? Well, let's say that you were in a car accident and it is deemed that you were at fault. If I were an attorney representing the other party, I'd be alerted to the fact that the car is in the name of the trust and that you have a family trust. So it's very possible that the lawsuit that could potentially come 
is going to name your trust as the defendant. And this may even be true if someone else is driving your vehicle. So if you wanna keep your trust outside of liability, which is one of the goals of a trust, then make sure you're not putting any of these cars, trucks, boats, vehicles inside the trust. Now, another asset I would consider not putting in trust is a life insurance policy. This is another example where you can name beneficiaries that can receive the benefit upon your death. So in this case, just like your retirement accounts, it's not going to go through probate and it's gonna go directly to your beneficiaries. So again, most people will name their spouse as the primary beneficiary of a life insurance policy. And then as a contingent, instead of naming their kids, they consider putting a trust as a contingent beneficiary so that if both you and your spouse are gone, the money again doesn't go directly to the kids and gets to be within the control of a trust that you get to design. So just like your retirement accounts, you can name your trust as a contingent beneficiary or a primary if you're unmarried. Again, so that the kids are not getting this giant check so that they or their future spouses could be irresponsible with. So in this case, if you pass, then the benefit goes to your spouse. And if your spouse passes with you, it would go to your contingent beneficiary, which if named as the trust, your kids can be the beneficiaries of that trust but you get to have all of the control through design of the trust and how you wanna allow them to use that money. Now, there is one big exception to this, and that is if your estate is large enough to potentially trigger estate taxes. Right now, the limit is $13 million, which frankly is not very many people, but that will go down in the future. And you also need to know your own state laws as it relates to state taxes. So if you end up dying early with a bigger retirement account and maybe some brokerage accounts or an investment property and now a large life insurance policy on top, you could be running into a state tax issue. So in this case, sometimes it may be appropriate to use something called an irrevocable life insurance trust or also known as an islet. This is essentially a separate trust from your living trust and it gets to become its own entity. So that will be excluded from your estate and helps to solve this problem. So it's important that you get your trust funded because otherwise that document is doing nothing for you. However, these are the assets that I would consider keeping outside of the trust. Hey, and if you learned something, hit the thumbs up on the video. And if you're serious about your retirement, then subscribe to get more videos like this. Until next time, stay wise and stay wealthy.